Shalom, Apostle Ha, coming back at you with this truth, giving all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakak Kodash. And I'm going to entitle this video, Eat This Roll and Go Out and Teach the Sons of Israel. Now, that's, uh, I'm making that statement. It's ba basically a quote from uh, Ezekiel, the uh, third chapter where the Most High came to uh, Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel. And the Most High is dealing with the prophets. The um, the people that the Most High is dealing with right now, the, directly through the Spirit, are the prophets, not uh, kings or captains or generals or uh, priests. Even though we do priestly duties, you know, we deal with the Passover and the High Holy Days and you go through the ceremony with the uh, Torah and the blessing and so forth. So that same man that does it is, is also supposed to be a prophet first and foremost. And um, if you're a prophet, you're supposed to prophesy. You're supposed to say the uh, same thing with a preacher, the word preacher. And I said this a bunch of times. The word preacher translates into the word prophet. So the only preacher out there is a prophet. So now if you're a prophet and the Most High is raising up the prophets, apostle is another word for prophet, prophet, uh, teachers. Because in order for you to teach the scriptures, you have to be a prophet. But why? Because somebody's going to ask you, what does this scripture mean? What does this what does this mean in uh, Daniel, the second chapter? Or what does that mean in uh, Revelation 11 chapter and whatever verse? So when you tell them what it means, you're, you're giving them prophecies. So even teachers in this truth under the Most High are... Uh, you know, our prophets, it all goes back to prophets. Anyway, what I did was I went to uh, my page and um, I put in, I went to the search engine and I put in, I believe I put in Revelation. I think I put in Revelation. And um, this is what popped up. And, you know, all of you have to know all the prophecies you have to know the entire book of revelation you have to know the entire book or you're supposed to know the t entire book of daniel and mainly you know if you don't know the whole book ultimately you're supposed to know understand the whole book uh but uh and we don't always put put out we don't always put out uh all the prophecies you know it, it it comes when the spirit hits us. So there's some chapters that we haven't really gone into, or maybe we've gone into it uh, years ago and never brought it back. But that's through the spirit. But the main prophecies that we're supposed to uh, bring out are, are prophecies that are taking place now and are about to take place. That's why we always mention the uh the mark of the beast being the microchip and the mark of the beast is the microchip if you can't see it the most i didn't open up your eyes i'm just gonna tell you just like it is anyway i put in uh, revelation and this is what popped popped up in my search engine the first uh video that came up um is Revelation chapter 8 and 9, the breakdown part 1. This was three years ago. Revelation chapter 11. This was put up two years ago. And I got to go back and just watch these, just, just to watch them. Revelation, um, and then you should understand these scriptures. You should understand these breakdowns. Even, even if you hadn't went through this in years, this is supposed to be in your mind. Somebody, you know, comes out that went to church and asked you something concerning Revelations, the 17th chapter, you should have the answers. Why? Because you went through it before. You were taught it by 
teachers over you. And when you don't remember it, that's that's a bad look. Now, I'm not saying you have to know. You, you might have a guy read 1st Maccabees and 2nd Maccabees and ask you a question concerning um, Judas Maccabees. It, it could be deep into the 1st uh, uh, Maccabees. It could be maybe, uh, I don't know, it could be chapter 4, chapter 5, and ask you, a specific thing well it's impossible for you to know that because if you hadn't gone through that you won't know the answer like in the book of Jonah Jonah um, I believe that's four chapters long now somebody could just had finished going through the book of Jonah and maybe in the second chapter ask you a question let's say in the 10th verse you know I'm just throwing it out there and you might you might give a general answer you know the Most High doesn't expect us to memorize the book word for word because it's impossible. But when they, when 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 um somebody brings out uh, first first Chronicles, the first chapter, the second chapter, and so forth, you know that's a genealogy that goes into the nations. It's basically another table of nations. Then it goes into the. Uh, the, the accounts of the kings and the prophets. So you don't have to know every aspect of, uh, you know, First Chronicles, of, uh, the first chapter, First Chronicles, the second chapter. You don't have to, but you have to have some kind of idea. You, you know, what, what does the word chronicles mean? It means a record. It's from the Greek chronos, which means time or a record. A history. You should under, You should know Genesis one, Genesis two, Genesis three, Genesis four, Genesis five. Then beyond that, you basically have uh, the accounts of Noah, and you have the history, and you know you have the um, the Most High creating the uh, the children of Israel. At first, they were called the sons of the Most High, the sons of God, the sons of the power. So we don't expect you to learn, know everything, but the breakdowns, you got to know these breakdowns, man. You got to know these prophecies. And um, I'm always hitting prophecies. So, uh, last week, uh, we, we spoke about a lot of prophecies. The week before that, we spoke about a lot of prophecies because these things are coming to pass. And... Um, you know, if you're part of the New York camp, you know I'm a little bit harsher with y'all. We do, basically, we go out there. I set up the camps now. You got eight men to each camp. You know, some camps you have maybe 12 or 13 men. Um, and, you know, through the spirit, you're going to always have people that's on fire. And then you're going to ha have people that are not as on fire as the other people in the camp. So, and then that make it stagnate. Excuse me. It stagnates you because you're leaning on a guy that knows this. Well, I'm going to lean on him. Well, you got to get it for yourself, man. It speaks about um, being on the same level as far as diligence is concerned. You suppose all, if, if, if I'm a scholar, you know, if I'm a top teacher, well, you that been in this thing for three years, you should be a top teacher uh, two. Whatever person comes up and asks a question to me, they should ask, and I give them an answer, the correct answer. They should ask you that same question, and you got you supposed to give them that answer. Especially if you've been in been in this thing for a year or two years. Some guys will say, "Well, I only came in this thing six months." Well, you know what? You supposed to know a lot in six months. You know, your attitude is not supposed to be, "Well, I'll wait till the spirit hits me." Um, anyway, I'm just showing you right here. You got Revelation, Revelation uh, 8, verse 9, Revelation chapter 11. And I could have put in Daniel or Ezekiel or Obadiah or, you know, any Zechariah. 
And you're supposed to understand all those breakdowns. You're supposed to understand all the prophecies and the, and the scriptures as a whole. You're supposed to have a general knowledge of the scriptures and the history. Like if somebody asks you to recite the genealogy from King David down to your house shy, who, who, who does that? But you're supposed to know that, well, King David was of the tribe of Judah. Yahweh was of the tribe of Judah, and he came from the direct lineage of King David, King Solomon, by his father Joseph. And that's something that the Christians and the Catholics can't understand. Even when you explain it to them, they can't see it. Anyway, and, and, and you know, people are coming to a lot of Edomites, a lot of uh, scholars and a lot of uh, pastors and ministers they're watching our videos and they're learning certain things, but they're going to kind of bring it out their own way, way like they figured it out or like the Most High is dealing with them. The Most High is not dealing with them. Uh, Revelation, the 17th chapter, a complete breakdown. Uh, Revelation, the great multitude in Revelation 7 are Israelites. The uh, Revelation chapter 8 and 9. So you have all these videos that I put up and I can go on and on. And I did it because I understood it because I learned it from high priest Arya and I studied it and I, well, Arya never really got into the mark of the beast because that wasn't talked about back then. Although I knew about the mark of the beast and I read it in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, it wasn't really pushed, but now it's being pushed um, damn near every, every time I speak. I'm going to mention it some some kind of way. If I don't mention it in one video, I'll mention it in another video. And you notice that you have camps that can't see it, and they buck up against us because we're teaching it, and they're trying to figure it out. They'll go to uh, the Mark in Revelation 13, then they'll go to the word Mark in um, uh, Romans uh, 16. Uh, what is that? Romans ver uh, chapter 16 about Mark them. Then they'll go into, uh, there's another word, you, um, um, Ezekiel uh, 9 and 4 on down, so the Mark on them. Then they'll say, well, what are the, they'll, they'll equate all those, uh, th that those three words or four words, Mark found in the different parts of the scriptures and equated to the same thing. No, that's when you go into the Hebrew. In Ezekiel 9 and 4, what is it, 9, the 4th or the 5th verse, or the 4th verse, it says, um, set a mark upon the men, the men that sign cry. So when you look at, now you got to go into the Hebrew. What does it mean by mark? Well, the word is thawa. Putting a mark on your flesh, like a tattoo or cuttings in your flesh in the, in the Old Testament in the law that word is um, what is that uh, I believe it's quite quiet if I'm not mistaken I got to look it up which means an actual mark then um, which based upon that putting a chip in you you would have to open up your skin put no cuttings in your flesh, put no marks, markings in your flesh. Now the word mark in Revelation, the 13th chapter, which speaks about the mark of the beast, the word there is karagma, which goes back to the word karax. So if you don't understand that and you can't see that, then you don't understand Revelation, the 13th chapter. And I keep saying the same thing. I, if, if I sound like a broken record, well, you just got to deal with it. You got this, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, spoke about growing, growing in this thing. You're supposed to grow. If you come in this thing six months, we expect a certain amount of uh, something out of you. A year later or six months later, which is a year later, we expect you to be no more than you did six months ago. Two, three, four years later, five years later, we expect you to be a top to the, to, the, to the spirit of the most high because we're over you. You know, 
we expect what the most high expects. You know, we're not dealing with guys that's just gonna come around and put their hands in their pockets and you know, you speak when somebody go, okay, brother, you going up and speak. And you really don't want to speak, but you speak because somebody over you told you to no, you gotta come come in the spirit, man. You gotta you gotta be you don't have to yell at the top of your lungs. But you gotta teach. Stop going through the motions. Like I said, I'm, I'm a little bit more hard and stringent with y'all. It's more of a go to camp, teach, uh, do the lineup, whatever things, news or whatever information that we got to give you. We give it to you quick. We salute out and we go. Oh, there was a story, and I believe it was Tazadakia, if I'm not mistaken, when the split came, the major split came from one west. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Tazadakia and another brother that they were cool with each other. It could have been two other brothers, but they were like, like, uh, you know, David and, and, and um, who was that, Jonathan, the son of Saul. And they were, they were knitted to each other. You know how you have a... a, a, a a friend that's that's real close to you like a brother or closer than a brother. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I believe uh, Tazadakia, the so-called comforter, was one of the guys because he wasn't no top uh, guy. He was just a teacher. And uh, what happened was when the split came, those two guys that were so close, one guy said, I'm going with King Mashah. And the other guy said, I'm staying with the main school. So when they looked at each other, they got into a fist fight and it was broken up. Them spirits were like active, man. So these guys basically like th thought the same, were cool with each other, hung out, called each other. You know, you was cool, that's your boy right there, right? And when that split came, that showed you how the spirit worked. And there was a lot of... Uh, there were some people that you thought were gonna go with this split or this this group instead of that group. So, you know, it's 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 all spiritual, man. Everything's spiritual. And um, you know, we know what happened to uh you know where Tazadak is now, if he's that one of those guys. But it shows you the seriousness of this truth and um the mindset of individuals, man. And there's a reason why you have guys watch videos and get with IUIC and then some guys get with ISUPK and then some guys get with GMS and some guys get with any uh, um, HODC or any of them other groups. It was all through the spirit. So we don't, you know, when you come into this thing, when you are part of GMS, you're here to work. You're here to grow in this thing. You're here to get better. You're here to know more scriptures. If you knew X amount of scriptures your first six months, you should know that much more a year later, two years later. Five years later, you're supposed to be on it. You should, nobody have, should have to teach you, you know? Anyway, um, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom, and uh, it's on to the next one. Shalom.